these. And I'm like, these women all belong to the same style category. They all belong to the amethyst key. And you might just be like, what? Because obviously all of these people have very different styles of outfits. And obviously it's not just true for celebrities, but it's also true for style more generally. I'll show you pictures of very different outfits like this very formal dress on the left, this kind of like more edgy creative looks, et cetera. And I'll be like, this all belongs to the same style category. And I know that this can be a little bit confusing for people because it's a little bit different from the way most other style systems do it, because these women are not necessarily bound together by this very specifically having the same exact tech of styles. And that's because the style key is based on the idea of essence. The way that you are, your personal energy, in my opinion, is deeper than the differences in the aesthetic or the visual style. So the reason that these women or these celebrities or all of my extremely diverse amethyst clients are grouped together is because they share the energy, the left down energy, which is the reason I use the amethyst style key. And that energy leads them to different style choices, but they're also not that different at the same time. So for example, in my view, these two women, if I showed them pictures of each other, they would say like, oh, our style is super different from each other. It's not at all similar because the one on the left is maybe like colorful, cozy, and the one on the right is kind of like edgy and cool. But for me, what is important is that both of these styles are visually very complex they are very eye-catching and they are built on the same principle of revealing something about the inner self creating like a very intriguing eye-catching look and doing it in a kind of an over-the-top way so that's why i have all of these different streams right where i'm like oh look at these women like it's you can be ethereal or you can be edgy or you can be colorful or you can be elegant you can do it in very many different ways and still be like doing the left up, the amethyst styling. And this is really, really important to understand that the reason it can look quite different while still really being true to the essence, the energy of who you are as a person is because it comes from the same underlying story and personal energy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What is the underlying story? What is the essence of the amethyst key? The essence of left up. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, welcome to Style Thoughts by Rita. Hi, Roberta. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you here. Hope you're having a cozy Saturday. I'm having the most relaxing Saturday ever. <laughs> this is my loungewear. But I'm just, I'm just having the best day. And I'm so excited to be here with you because I love to talk about the big picture, this kind of like energetic discussion because I feel like that's really what is at the heart of the style key, right? That's why we have the style logic and we have the aesthetic suggestions. It all comes from the idea that there is something out there that is like the left personal energy or essence. And there's something out there called the up personal energy and essence. And if you have the left energy and the up energy, the way that you combining them together is something that is really special to you. and leaning into and understanding the story of that essence for yourself is going to really help you find your best style and not just look the best but also have the best purse like experience personal inner life that is in style being a part of that so it's really not just about getting the cutest clothes but really about i don't know having the best life and having the best time and feeling your very best Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to break down the left essence, that essence, what's the left up. Hi, everybody. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then before that, I just want to mention, oh, only one thing. Yeah, so if you are watching the video and you're like, I think I have this, or I've seen a couple of the ones, I'm not sure which one I am, or I think I am left up, I think I have it, I want to use that with the style key, that's what I want to do. But what does this mean for me? You know, it does look so different. How do I do this? Whether you want help figuring out where you are in the system or you just want some help knowing how to actually work with your essence, like if you recognize yourself in the challenges I'm talking about and you would like the gifts, but you're not really sure how to go from the challenges to the gifts, then you should work with me. I have 30 minute personal consultations. It's my favorite thing. It's really, really empowering, very inspiring. It's really fun. and it's just the best. So I have a link below you can read about 
my services are like a Q&A. I have more than 100 reviews. I have a calendar where you can book your time. And I would really love to meet you. Okay. So now let's get into our Essence discussion. Let me just find it. So Essence for me, I use the word Essence because I like it a bit more than energy, but it's basically this overall experience and impression of you as a person that is on an energetic level. It's really important to understand that Essence is not the direct result of something like, oh, you're tall, so you have intimidating essence, right? A person could be tall without having intimidating essence, even though, of course, our physicality is part of our personal energy, right? Um, if you have a really sweet and pretty voice, of course, people are going to, like, there's something about you that's going to factor that in. But essence for me really goes deeper than kind of a checklist of our personal traits. And that's something that I think makes the system a little bit challenging for people this idea that it's built on how you feel, right? The ex your inner experience of your energy, but also how other people feel you, like how you come across, like what is kind of the dominant flavor of you? What is that first impression that people really strongly, consistently get regardless of your mood, regardless of time? What is that overall flavor of you? And because it's not really like your personality and it's not, as I said, any checklist of physical traits, it can feel very abstract and mysterious. And it is abstract and mysterious. I think that is just like an important starting point for the whole system. At the same time, the reason I think it's really worth working with your personal essence is because even though it is difficult to measure, it is very, very, uh, tangible in feel, right? So wh when people's personal style is really working against their essence, like if you know a person who is uh, really gentle, really creative, really expressive, but they were just wearing, I don't know, like a black blazer and pants every single day, you would just be like, but something is really like, there's like a weird disconnect, right? You really notice. Vice versa, I think we really do notice when people's personal style really lifts up who they are as people, even people who are not that well versed in style. It's not about necessarily noticing like, oh, Rita has like big earrings or something. It's just about feeling like, okay, what this person is showing me matches kind of what I'm feeling about them. And that's what we're really trying to do is create this personal style that's matching how you like perceive the really important energies of you and how other people are experiencing the really important energies of you. Because as I said, even though it can feel not very concrete, it's very, very tangible. And so as you know, in the style system, I have this four, ah, my earring fell off. I have these four groups of the essence, right? So I believe that we can split up the essence into left and right essence. And then we can also split into this up and down essence. And each of these essence categories has its own style key, which is its own set of style practices, style logic, habits, and aesthetics, right? And so today we're gonna to talk about the, common, the left up essence that's gonna use the amethyst style key. And it is the combination of having the left essence and the up essence. I've already done the left down, right down. So today we're gonna to do the left up because that's what people voted for on my Instagram. So we're going to just break it down by talking about the left aspects and then the up aspect. So what is left essence? To me, energetically, the left energy is about capturing attention. It's about bringing in. It is very like enveloping. I feel like you get really pulled into these people's energetic field and you uh, enveloping to me is really you feel like this kind of like energetic hug by them. I feel like also left energy is very intriguing. It really invites curiosity. People's attention is really drawn to you. And I feel like this really corresponds energetically again with your desire to be really anchored in the inner world and your ability to share the inner world. Okay. I wanna like say here, you know, there's like 30 something people watching. If you're like, I think, you know, I think I have left essence, but I don't feel comfortable being like, I'm capturing attention. I'm so inviting curiosity. I want to remind you that as, like with every step of the essence way, what we're trying to do is to really romanticize your energy. I mean, that's like a cute contemporary word for it. Uh, but ultimately what we're trying to do, right, is to distill what really is important about you. And you may not feel so comfortable 
slapping this label on yourself or it may feel like, okay, but it's not that strong. Like it was just a little bit intriguing. It's okay. So what I'm just trying to say is like, it's, it's fine if the actual description makes you a little bit nervous. It doesn't mean that's not you. Bunny says they seem to attract even more attention when I tried to dress to avoid attention. That is totally true. And I just want to say you are not alone in that. I'll just say that's a very typical struggle. So in concrete style terms, what does it mean to have this left attention ringing in essence? Is it you want to feel grounded in the south, right? Everything is coming from inside the house. You really want style to be true to you, who you are. And you really want to like feel free to be. This is like really important to you that style is letting you really be you. You have this desire to be guided by your inner impulse rather than by external structures. By this, I mean like we all live in a society. I know you have like a dress code. I know that there are seasons, but for you, you really want to be like, what fate, you know, what am I vibing with? If I'm really loving bright, bold colors, it doesn't matter to me if it's winter and everybody's wearing black and you're supposed to wear black in winter. What I want is this, right? Or conversely, oh, but in the summer, it's supposed to be like, oh, like breezy and fun. But I am really like, black is everything to me. A thousand streets of black, that's my favorite wardrobe. <laughs> that's going to be what you're going to be wearing because you want, because you feel like you're receiving so much attention, you want that to be true to you and you want it to be, it's like the right type of attention, right? So in concrete, concrete style terms, it's a really strong desire for wants to focus on yourself and like a, a fear of like not feeling yourself, right? So the gift of the left essence then is being able to draw inspiration from the world within you. So you have these ideas, desires, and traits that you want to show. Again, if you feel like you don't really feel like you're connected to the gift, that's just because you haven't maybe given yourself the opportunity or maybe you have, oh my God, maybe you haven't had the opportunity to develop this gift at this point. So I have like earring converters and sometimes I don't screw them on tightly enough and that's why it happens. But I also think it's kind of cute. Cute. All right. So you're able to draw that inspiration from yourself, but you might not necessarily connect to that. But like you at your best are able to, as I said, kind of look beyond what people are doing, what's expected of you and think instead about like, wow, I'm a really like powerful and kind of mystical person. Like this is what I really like. And not only do you have this awareness of self, I really want to stress this because I think like, you know, like everybody all over the style map has awareness of self. What you have is the ability to directly translate this awareness of self into like actual style choices, right? So you're able to just like be like, oh, like I have this idea in my head of like, I don't know, like a mystery mermaid. And not only do you have the idea, but like given enough building skills, inner permission, et cetera, you have the really amazing gift of actually being able to translate that idea into like specific clothing choices, right? So when you're there in the morning, you're able to pick out clothes based on what you want, what you're feeling inside yourself. That doesn't paralyze you. It doesn't confuse you. It makes things easier. You walk into the store, you're like, what is me? You're able to just like hone in on it. That's the gift. The challenge is listening to those inner impulses and learning to follow them, right? Not everybody operates in style this way. Also, a lot of us carry a lot of like shame and just insecurity over our choices, right? You're like, oh, I love these types of styles, but you know, nobody else dresses like this and that makes me a bad person. Or you're like my inner impulse, especially if you're left up, maybe like over the top, that makes me a bad person. A lot of like, I don't wanna be weird. I don't wanna be this, I don't wanna be that. I don't wanna be inappropriate, I don't know. Like just a lot of concerns and I don't want to, like when I make this little sound, I'm not saying these concerns are unfounded because the reason that they stick with us is because they were based on some real experience, right? You chose something and somebody was like, is that like really what you think looks good? You know, that's what happens. And over time kind of blocks your ability to listen to that inner impulse, blocks your ability to follow that inner impulse and be like, you know, instead you're like, oh, like I love the idea of a mystical mermaid, but that has nothing to do with my life. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to bring that image to light or like, oh, I just like imagine like a shimmering prism. That is like so, so, something about that is so fascinating to me, but that hasn't like, that doesn't, you know, that's not a clothing item. That's not a trend 
or like, you know, that's not something I've seen. So you just kind of block yourself from following those impulses and then you don't learn how, right? Because it's, I mean, honestly, translating a shimmery prism into a specific outfit isn't something that's like um, really easy for everybody. Once you learn the skill, honestly, it is really easy. I can tell you that I try to work with so many people. You can translate whatever concept into outfits like pretty easily once you get your own pathway for how that's going to work. Before that pathway, you might just be like, this is impossible. The other thing is also like learning that you don't owe anyone any emotional experience, detaching from expectations. By emotional experience, I mean like, can sometimes feel like, oh, my job is to make people comfortable. That's a big one. My job is to make people happy. Job is to impress. Right. So I don't want to look too different, whatever. The point is you don't really win any prizes as a person. It's not your gift from doing things the correct way, but it takes just lived experience to realize that that's true. So it's like, I don't know every single person watching this video right now, right? It's going to be like, I don't know, a thousand people watch this stream. I don't know every single one of you. So obviously I'm just talking about the system, but as so far as the system goes and my experience with hundreds of clients is that what you do is like, you're like, okay, I work in a school as an admin person. And this is what an admin person should look like. You know, this is what I mean by external inspiration. You're like, they wear cardigans and they wear like earrings that match the color of their outfit. So that's what I should have, right? There is no flavor of like, who am I? What do I want? What are my strengths? What impulse is moving through me? Instead, it's just like role fulfillment. What am I supposed to do? And trying to do that. Now, there's like nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like your life's not going to end. It's not going to be a disaster. But usually what happens is like you end up just being really unsatisfied with your style. The unsatisfaction then spills out in several ways. Either you're shopping all the time because you're like, I don't really know something's wrong. I need to fix it. You're criticizing your body all the time. You're like, well, if I was just taller, then I would like myself. You're criticizing yourself or you're just like shrinking and making yourself smaller because your clothes are telling you that you're supposed to be playing this kind of character, which you aren't. But because your clothes are sending that message, you're always just kind of like compromising on being yourself. And you might be like, oh, but you know, I don't need to be myself at work. And yeah, maybe you don't. But actually 10, 15 years, you kind of do. And then it's like for a lot of people, it happens a lot faster than 10, 15 years. It's kind of like you do need to be yourself. And for you, style really coming from who you feel yourself to be is really really important for you. Okay, big pep talk. Because this whole stream is just a big pep talk, really. So that's the left essence. Now we're going to talk about the up essence. So the up essence, in terms of like your personal energy, I would say stronger, impressive, in the sense that like, not impressive, like people look up to you, impressive, like you make an impression. Does that make sense? Like people really feeling you um intense i put in quotation marks because i reclaim intense but i know for a lot of people intense kind of like a bad word especially for women evocative um that's similar to me as impressive like something about you really evokes a response like people just really respond whether you like it or not whether you want it to or not there's just something about you people are just like really react to even if you're a shy and quiet person i really want to stress this this is, to me is really not related as far as I've seen in my experience working with clients for three years, it's not related to you being extroverted, really bold. In fact, I have a lot of really introverted, shy, quiet clients who really want their clothes to be expressive so their clothes speak for them so that they don't have to speak that thing. And in general, you have this, what I call a higher energetic barrier. By this means you don't like to feel like you're accessible. You don't like for people to feel like they understand you. You're like, don't even feel that comfortable with people feeling like they could see you or reach you. Like you just really like to keep an energetic distance. And again, this can always, as everything in the world, it can be like done in a bad way. That's not good for you, but there's nothing wrong with this. It's just a normal way of being a person if you manage it well. 
So in concrete style terms, if you have the opacence, um, it's being kind of a protective layer between you and the world. Another analogy I really love is to think about like a bubble wrap. You know what I mean? Like you feel like you're like a delicate, beautiful antique vase and you don't want to just go into the world bumping around on things. So you like put on your bubble wrap and you're ready to go, right? So that's what all of this is, right? Like why three colors of eyeshadow? Because it's the bubble wrap. Also, not just in terms of for you, for your safety, but I also think kind of a lens, kind of a frame, um, helps people perceive you properly. That's a really big thing for op essence is that you like to put on a lot of things literally visually, not every single day, but like overall, you like having more stuff on and you like having a more curated visual presence because you feel like you really want to guide how people are seeing you. And you really don't like feeling like you're out of control. You don't like the idea that people could just perceive you, project whatever they want onto you. Again, like, like, Oh, we're trying to control what people see you. Like, you know, that can be problematic, but it it's absolutely can be super healthy, very nourishing, and it's like a very positive sense of control that style gives you, right? So that's the energetic description and what it means in style terms. McT says, I can relate to this. Okay. Mara says, that's good to know as I was questioning if you have to be bold and extroverted to be left up. Yeah, no, absolutely not. That's why I say, and, and I, I get that this is really not super intuitive. This, But like, that's why I always I'm saying that like essence really is not the same thing as personality, right? Because personality traits are like, oh, extroversion or like humor. Like, are you funny? You know, that that's like a personality trait or like kind. How likely are you to be kind to other people, right? And so for me... Essence is not the same as those traits because you could be really kind, but you could still have a high energetic barrier where it's like people may be a little bit intimidated by you. Maybe you're not as approachable or just like even as available in your kindness, but does it mean you're not a kind person? Or if you have a very strong energy that people really respond to, you know, and you know, like if you've been living with that car in your garage for a couple of decades, you know what it feels like. You just come into a situation. It feels like people really like just feel you coming. You know, that's what you have. You don't need to necessarily be the world's loudest talker. And in fact, a lot of people with this very strong personal energy can end up being kind of introverted because they don't really I don't know. It just feels easier. It feels easier than to be yourself. McTee says, is it more that others perceive as bold or intimidating regardless of your actual personality? Yeah, I, th I think like for sure, like intimidating is one of the up keywords I use for the up essence because, and I do think it really relates to um, people having that energetic impression of you. I also think like for most people over time, you might accept that you're intimidating but I don't think like obviously you as a person aren't intimidated by yourself. So it can be like very hard to accept that label. I mean, that's something I have like a really big personal journey with because people are so really freaked out by me, I guess. Like not everybody, but like I have so much, you know, as a 33 year old, I have so much experience with people being so intimidated. And I'm like, but I am me because I'm seeing me from like inside. And I'm like, but what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> what is it like? What is so scary about like this? Um, but, you know, it's just, yeah. So it is that can be, can be bold. Because the thing is, if you're shy, I mean, people don't feel necessarily you're bold, but people really are, like intense, I think is often a really big word for it. And Marna says, I definitely identify with quiet intensity. Yeah. Betty Teeth says, I just get stared at. I don't think I'm intimidating. Well, you don't have to be intimidating. Um, so with the up keywords, with the drama, like just to remind you, like I have a lot of keywords in my system. It's like dramatic, effort, persona, glamorous, mysterious, intimidating. So like you don't have to be all of those things. Those are like words that are all pointing at this up dimension. So they're just like words to capture the idea of having this intense, evocative, impressive upon others essence. And, you know, you could be a more mysterious person, could be a more intimidating person. You could just be a more dramatic, like I, you have your own flavor, right? Like I, for example, feel like I'm not particularly mysterious, but I'm very extravagant. So you don't have to be all of those things. 
Carissa says, I've been between up and down, but people seem to think I'm approachable most of the time. So <laughs> it's down. Well, okay. I mean, I do like, yeah, I, I think that if people feel like really comfortable, um, if people feel very, very comfortable, relaxed around you, and you personally think like that is really nice and you find that like enjoyable and you are happy with your style and you feel like your style creates that impression. Yeah, that's dumb essence. Because then it's like, right, your style is part of that energetic experience for people and you are happy with that and that feels like it's like true for you. That is like approachable, which is definitely one dimension of the down essence. So I would really recommend looking at the Ruby, Ruby video. All right, so let's talk about the gifts and challenges for the up essence. So your gift up I'd say bold and courageous styling, right? Because you, and I even write like also willing to do a lot. So because you want to create a bit of that distance, because you want to create that armor, because you want that bubble wrap, because you want to like channel that intensity inside, you're willing to like do a lot um, visually, you're willing to like wear a lot, you're willing to put in a lot of work. It's just, you're really willing to go there. And I like that it's like, as I said, you don't have to be bold as a person, but you have like a gift for styling that is definitely bolder. So it's not that, you know, your friends with the down essence couldn't wear the outfits you wear because they look so stupid. It's more that like for you, taking the opportunity to really embrace bold visual styling as i said harmonizes with the impression like you make in the world and the impression you want to make in the world so you can just take more risks because you're like well people are going to really react to anyway so you know you can really go for it and it's really fun right to think oh being intense it's not a bad thing i can actually see my strong personal presence as a gift and I can use style to amplify that personal presence. If you have a really cool outfit, even if you don't really feel it, it really can give the impression of confidence and this impression of boldness and courage, which are, you know, uh, traits that people really like. And these, so these are really nice uh, style gifts. And if you have had a heart as with the left essence, if you're feeling like, Rita, I don't relate to this at all. It's like, it doesn't mean you don't have up essence. It just means maybe you haven't cultivated these gifts. You haven't given yourself permission to see them as gifts. You haven't just thought about all of this, which is totally fine. That's why I am here to help you think about these things. Flip side, the challenge of the up essence, right? Performing like a fake version of yourself, right? You're like, okay, people are gonna notice. So I need to do it, I need to like, I want to be seen, right? I know like the up essence of people, they really like making an impression. They like to be seen. So then you end up like performing some fake version of yourself. You're like, this is trendy. I want people to think I'm a trendy, cool person. Here's my trendy, cool person outfit, right? Because you, 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 you know, it's going to be seen. You like the idea of being seen and you want to be seen in the best way, you know? Also, this like perfectionism. I feel like it's the biggest struggle for all left of people since the number one theme I always talk about my clients over and over again from so many angles style perfectionism like all or nothing if I can't be perfect I'm not going to do anything comparing yourself to the other people who you're supposed to be really neglecting your own needs in terms of like what's your lifestyle what's like literally what literally do you need from your clothes to do your physical comfort your body um you know, what you just feel good in and focusing on doing the thing well, right? Like I found this image, it was inspiring. It reflects like something in my inner world. So if I don't dress that way, like I'm failing, you know, just like I put it performing for sake of performing. I really hope this doesn't come across as harsh to you. I realize when I'm talking about the challenges and being really emphatic and I'm really hope that if you're watching this, you don't feel like called out in a negative way reason I'm being really emphatic about this is because my experience with the left up essence is that people think they are alone with these challenges. And a really big story I have had with returning clients, people messed up courses, etc. is also left up can sometimes end up being like, but I'm not left up because like, I can't, I don't want to dress like this celebrity or like, I can't do this, Rita. I can't be like on display all the time. And no, nobody's asking you that. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying like, this is just like, it's just a regular left up confusion. 
so it's really just like, I really want to explain that this is like just a normal challenge that comes across from being a person who enjoys using style in a performative way, who is able to pull off a lot of things and who has like a very intense personal impression and a very rich inner vision. It's just a normal challenge for it to go like a bit over the top and stress you out. All right, let's look at the comments. As we says, people don't approach me first, except friends. I like to be a bit more proper, I think, so leaning towards right up. All right. Yeah, I support you. Bunny Teeth says, I related more to the Ruby videos, but it's obvious left up logic works better for me. I think logic is the most obvious part of the system because it's like, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? Um, so when people are doubting, I really try to bring it back to that because like that's also more tangible, right? Like what types of questions can I ask myself? Are those questions like helping me get dressed in the morning? And then obviously there's a learning curve, but it's like, if it, like when you're asking yourself the right types of questions, it's like the learning goes fast and you're like, I'm picking things out. These things are working for me. And if you have no idea what we're talking about with the style logic, I have a playlist on style logic. I have like a 10 minute video for each of the style keys about how to make style decisions. So I really invite you to check that out. Mara says, maybe it's a strange question. Do people have very different quadrants harmonize in love life? Oh my goodness. Um, I think this is like really, really sweet. Somebody yesterday, I had a client who was like, he was like, oh, you know, he was um, the write down protagonist. And he was like, and you know, my favorite, like the girls I like, they're also like the matrix or the gentle grace. Like, do you think something is there? And I feel like uh, a lot of people I know have a lot of theories. <laughs> about how the different quadrants can combine in love uh, as a like love is probably my most favorite thing in the whole universe so I just like get so happy talking about this I don't I don't think that there's any one theory I am uh, intensely in love with my completely diagonally opposite husband and I of course know people who have the same quadrant or like they're both really up but what is left one is right like it's like there's so many fun combos so I could just talk about it forever it just really pleases me because love is the best. Mara says sometimes I feel people don't get me the way I am or on a surface level I'm afraid to say I may not be good enough to suit into this other world and be taken serious. Okay you're really not low to that. And I just want to say that because I think it's really nice to know that our struggles that feel the most difficult are not alienating us from other people. Um, it is scary, but the, the whole point of having the courage with left up to really show the world who you are, right? My tagline is style to reveal yourself. My idea is that style is supposed to show who you are to the world. The whole point of that is that it's not a one and done journey. It's not like, oh, you were at zero and now you've done it and you're doing it. It is like a lifelong learning process. I love to say it's like a chapter with very, sorry, a book with many, many chapters, right? So it's just about learning, like, where can I be more courageous? Maybe you have friends who you feel like quite comfortable around and you want to just experiment being more bold there maybe at work you could take a really small step but that small step will be something that like feels really nice to you maybe there's something in your loungewear at home where you're like i'm actually a really glamorous person that's a really big part of my personal identity i've been denying this i want to get a really cute pair of glamorous pajamas like this is what i want nobody's even going to see that so it's like you know it doesn't it requires a different type of courage so i would just say yeah, it's 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 a very long story, so just keep going with it. All or nothing, that's me. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. That's why archetypes and keywords are hard. I guess archetypes and keywords are hard. If anybody wants help with archetypes and keywords, I always invite you to work with me or to check out my archetype guide, the keyword guide. But I mean, I just think seeing yourself is hard, and that's why I'm making the streams about the quadrants, because I think like that's the first thing. That's the most important thing to master. I think the archetypes are really fun. So people want to jump into them, but like the archetype doesn't work by itself. It only works if you understand the general concept on left up essence and what you're doing. Morna says, I have no idea what to wear in situations where comfort is 
the priority, for example, at the airport sitting for hours, I feel the most vulnerable in these situations. Yeah, I feel you, I hear you. That is a common struggle. Uh, you could check out my video on visual interest because yeah, I think the point is just to create visually interesting outfits and give you like, if you have especially recurring situations that are very casual, it's just really important to find a way to be true to yourself. Beza says, I really need to left off logic, but my style looks very dreamy and right up. That makes me doubt myself. Yeah, I mean, I, as I said, I really think it's just hard to put people in, it's hard to put ourselves into a box. It's hard to choose any label for ourselves. So you're not alone. And I think the main thing is just to think about what tools are helpful for me, because the point of the system isn't to conform with the system or to do it correctly, but just to think about like, what do I want with style? What tools are helping me go there? If the style logic feels helpful, I would use it. Hi, Glimmer. Alex says, thanks for explaining the energetic barrier. People seem to find me very approachable, but I really don't like it. I relate pretty strongly to closest armor. Yeah. So this is something I really want to say on the approachability. approachability. Is that like a lot of times if you have strong up essence, but you don't really dress in a very up way, and especially you haven't for a long time, it just, I don't know, like I feel like the word repressed sounds a little bit too heavy and intense. So maybe disconnected is a better word. I feel like what happens is that you are very disconnected from your personal power because you have not been charging that battery for years. Um, you, and the, the thing with up essence is that if you have been dressing in a very underwhelming way for a long time, you may not relate to having a strong personal presence. And you might in general, like just be a bit down on yourself, to be honest, because you are depleting that inner battery and you may feel like the way people are seeing you is not harmonious to who you are at all, but you don't even know who you are. Like it's a long, complex, difficult journey for a lot of people. But that's also why, like, I can't, you guys, like, that's why, you know, I'm like, oh, if you need help finding your essence, like, you should have a meeting with me because I cannot make a quiz. I really have tried. I mean, I have this checklist, which is the best thing I can do. But I think it's very hard to be like, well, how do people perceive you? Here's like an easy quiz because people could be perceiving you in a way that's totally not really like what the essence of you is. Or me, like, you know, I also think it's very possible for people to go through really big shifts in like who we are, like in a really fundamental way or like how we want to be in the world, right? So very possible for you to have been a person who has really strong up essence. Um, and then, you know, your personality, maybe like your sense of humor and your warmth and your creativity kind of remains the same, but you really like realize like, oh, this upness is not me anymore. It's not serving me. It doesn't feel good. I actually feel like the down essence is like what is emerging within me. That's very possible and really beautiful I think so yeah like it's not some static thing where just because people treat you some way that means you have to perform to their expectations mint milk tea says I relate to not wanting to be approached wanting to be approached on my own terms I think that's the point of the up essence what I'm talking about with the positive sense of control like you just really want to People, you just want to know what people are perceiving. You want to feel like you're controlling it. SB says, are there clear delineators of things we would not do be or have? No, as I said, like, I don't have it. I don't have some sort of a testing. I have a really nice checklist on my Your Style Key website of the style logic. I think the best way to decide for yourself is to consider your essence, your style logic, and your aesthetic choices in harmony and to find which quadrant aligns best with them. Hi, Marina. Bunny Teeth says, I don't like being scrutinized by strangers. I don't think anybody likes that. Rebecca says, my go-to for plain rides is a dress, cardigan, tall boots, and nice earrings. As V says, I've been depleting my battery. Yeah, this is a really big thing for up essence in general. I mean, for all people, like this is my favorite analogy. If you have, ever have a meeting with me, I'll talk about it. I really think like personal style is like this battery that is like charging us up. And the difference between the essence quadrants or even the archetypes is like, what is that mechanism? What, how does that battery charge work for us, right? And for left up, it's about like, I am being seen, I am being perceived, I am showing who I am to the world in an authentic way. These are the things that really charge up your battery over time, right? And so what, and this brings me, I want to, people are having great questions, but I want to just wrap up a bit like, putting it together, right? The left and the up. 
I am talking about revealing myself, right? So the style is grounded in the left idea of who I am. That's the starting point. The upness is expressive, impressive. It's visually striking. It's like, right? It's like something going on. So it's about taking this thing on the inside and showing it to other people through style. This takes courage. It is bold. And the important thing is not to think about how do I do this perfectly? How do I do it in a way that everybody's going to like me? How do I show people I'm a nice person? How do I fit in, you know, but just really keeping your eye on the prize, which is like, does my style look like something within me that feels true to me? Um, do I feel like when I look at outfit, I'm like, yeah, this visually represents something that is, feels really true and really grounded in me. And as I said before, this isn't like a zero or a one. There's not like, yes, it perfectly does. No, it doesn't, you know, at all. It's always going to be like somewhere around there. And the style process for you is not about perfecting it. It's just about figuring out like, where are you unhappy and how can you improve that? So if you look at my foundation scores, for example, I invite you to do a little wardrobe audit of thinking about like, what are the different arenas in my life? Are my clothes actually like, what do I want to be saying about myself there? Are my clothes really doing that for me? And then focusing like, where am I the least happy? That's the place where I want to point, like emphasize my effort, right? Because we can't be working on every aspect of our wardrobe, like all the time. It's just exhausting, right? So if you feel like you're watching this, you're like, I relate to left up. I can't relate to the gifts. I'm not using style as this tool to empower myself, then you got to start, you know, doing the work in the efficient way for yourself. You have to get real about yourself. Like, where are you hiding? Where are you just like wearing this costume? Where are you just trying to impress people with how cool and interesting and creative you are, rather than wearing clothes that actually express something meaningful about you? And where do you feel safe to start doing that? How can you start doing that? And how can you be kind to yourself in that process rather than, you know, being super down on yourself for not looking like the most perfect, perfect, perfect person that has ever existed. Mara says, I was hiding for way too long, kind of a write down style because I was afraid to show the real me as left up, fear of rejection. Since a few days, I practiced to incorporate more and more. That's really beautiful. The important thing is just to keep going and to remember that when you wear your like write down hiding outfits, you're not failing yourself and you're not failing at style. You're just in the process. Um, when you aligning with your true essence as a person, if you're up, right, that you have some sort of effort, dramatic, glamour, mysterious essence, that means that like, of course you have days when you just wear simple, relaxed clothing because we're just a person. But over time, generally those types of clothes will just feel like okay, like I have those if I need them, but overall my style can't be really like understated and um, like e oriented towards kind of a subtle beauty because it just doesn't vibe with who I am. And that understanding is gonna emerge over time internally. And that's the best kind of understanding, right? Cause it's driven by your own experiences and it's something nobody can take away from you and nobody's imposing onto you, right? So it's not like, Rita said, I'm this, so I have to wear this stuff. But it's like, I know that this is what makes me feel good. So this is what I wanna do. And this is how I'm gonna do it. And that's the goal always for me is to just like get you to use style in a way that feels like authentically empowering for who you are as a person, right? So that's why I keep talking about style logic, right? I want you to have that genuine experience where you're asking yourself like, what are the important qualities about me? I want people at work to know. How can I show these qualities? If I'm doing it, like that's a success. If, if those questions are not helpful to you, or if you're not interested in answering those questions, then it's like, then the not really working with the essence. And you know, if that doesn't feel good for you, then you don't need to do it because it's not like you're gonna look ugly and stupid. This is just my toolbox and what I recommend. Okay, people are happy. Somebody's retracting messages. Alex says, thanks, super, super helpful. All right, um, we didn't have time to get into my big analogy. So I'll just skip into my, I'll just skip into my like last pep talk bit on what I, I really loved all of your questions and comments by the way. So that's why I wanted to do that instead of my big analogy part. So here are my takeaways. First of all, for you, 
you really have to release the idea of the person you're supposed to be. And as I said, this is not a one and done process. This is like a hundred different layers. So just start with the most obvious one. It's like, what are you tired of? Like, what are you tired of trying to pretend to people? Like, which, in what way do you think, like, oh, you're supposed to be like a boring office person. And a bit like nobody in your office wants that for you. <laughs> like nobody asks that and they are not even boring office people either. So just releasing the idea of the person you're supposed to be, focus on your excitement, like what genuinely just feels like, yeah, like activating for you. Like, I like this, like this makes me excited to wear. Like, I'm not sure if it's perfect. I'm not sure how it affects other people, but it's just something that bubbles up inside me like a little firecracker. And allow yourself to also bring that excitement to other people, not trying to control how they see you and trying to make sure that they get the message you're trying to send across. For you, it's not really effective. Just focus instead on genuinely wearing clothes that are positively activating for you. And this is also a caution against trying to do too much, right? You're like, I need to be like Florence Welch, you know, which is like, she has 20 years of professional experience wearing custom made Gucci clothing. Well, if you have that, you would also feel probably a lot more comfortable in those types of clothes, but you have to start where you are uh, focus on what feels exciting to you. And if something feels like way too over the top, like you've gone too far. So go to the excited place. And finally, just remember, like by expressing yourself visually, you back yourself. You're like, this is who I am. I am allowed to be this way. I'm allowed to be seen this way. And that's how you're building self-love, right? You're saying like, I'm a person who deserves to be seen. That's the confidence. This is, I'm allowed to be exactly who I am. And I trust that I am representing myself in a way that feels good and it's power because you're saying like listen this is what's going on this is what I'm wearing I know that I'm going to be noticed I know that people receive this energetic impression from me and I'm owning this right so loving yourself feeling confident to be who you are and really taking charge of your life amazing like infinitely beautiful I think and that's why right my infinite obsession with style because it's crazy that just like some pieces of clothes by right, putting them on every single day that you're building this extremely tangible outcome that like spills over onto all of these other areas of life right not just like oh i'm gonna get 100 likes on my photo but like i am going to go into my relationships with more confidence i'm gonna approach my life with more power and i'm gonna like build that self-love for myself one day at a time amazing all right, my angels, thank you so much for coming. It's a great, cozy Saturday night hangout. Again, I'm gonna remind you that if you are not sure which quadrant you're in, if you don't know which style key to use, or if you really like the amethyst, but you're like, is it really me? Or am I deluding myself? Or, but how do I really do that? Are my outfits good enough for left up like that? encouragement and to help you see yourself or also to be like oh like I see why you like the left up but I like that's not like I feel like you would be happier and you would do better with this other thing that's why I have my services I love to work with you I'm going to link my calendar below and I have this q and I have not shared with you so really consider treating yourself to that if you want an external gaze and if you want to um consider a bit more some of the other aspects we talked about as i said i have a video on the style logic for amethyst style to reveal yourself and that's the video i would watch after this okay this is um, nobody has any other pressing questions so then i'm gonna let us go for the evening. Thank you so much for being here with me for your interest in the system. And I really, really hope that the video speaks to you. I know almost like 95% of everybody watches the recording. So if you liked it, if you have questions, feel free to leave me your questions. It really helps me create the best content for you. And also if you just say you liked it, it really helps me because I'm like, oh, people actually like this. Like the way I explained it was good. If you don't say that, I don't actually know. So it's not just that I love compliments, which I do. It's more that like when you say this worked for me, then I'm like, good, then we do more of that. And if you say this didn't work for me, I'm like, okay, we need to change it. 
So please um, let me know either way. Like, I'm just happy to receive your thoughts, whatever those thoughts are. Oh, bye everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, thanks for everything. Take care.